Hey there, fellow nerds. This is Jonathan of Nerdy Shogun here with another cartoon vlog for all of you today. And for those of you who grew up in the early 2000s, we are going to be talking about a classic cartoon today. That being Samurai Jack. So, with Samurai Jack, I have a very weird personal history with it. I knew of it, I had seen it a few times on Cartoon Network, sometimes less through the cartoon itself, but rather through the Cartoon Network City bumpers way back in the day. I think with that I've just shown you how old I might be. But for those of us who remember those times, they were good times, to put it simply. But later on, after we got the series on DVD, I actually had the chance to fully appreciate this cartoon for what it is. A modern classic that more people need to see at least once in their lives to truly appreciate it. Especially if you want a series that prefers to show you the story rather than just tell it, like most modern TV shows do nowadays. And that is one thing that Samurai Jack excelled at, telling you a story through actions, not through words. You would see the story play out before you with epic dramas, great action, and amazing character motives, all played out sometimes with the barest of sounds, whether it's just the sounds of nature or things moving. Even then, these characters would barely talk. Jack himself said maybe a few words throughout every episode, at most, but more often than not, he was completely silent. But, of course, we all know the classic story. A young samurai wielding a magic sword that can defeat all evil gets transported to the far future by the evil shapeshifting wizard known as Aku. And from this, we see his journey of trying to find a single time portal throughout this massive mind-bending and absolutely bizarre future that we see before us and he continues to look for any sort of time portal that can take him back home through the entirety of about five total seasons we followed this man on his various journeys traveling through this far distant future facing aku many a times but never quite destroying him only managing to drive him away for a few episodes at most before aku would then send another bounty hunter or another ally or minion of his to try to defeat the samurai, only to be defeated every time. And there were actually a few episodes that did not feature Raku at all. Those with Jack just being doing episodes of personal growth. But one of the biggest highlights I can say for this cartoon itself was its policy of show, don't tell. This is something that a lot of modern shows don't do nowadays. With the exception, of course, now being the new series Primal, which, of course, is made by Gendy Tartakovsky. <laughs> but with that all out of the way, Samurai Jack especially excels at this. There are a lot of moments throughout every episode of this series where there are moments where the characters will not talk at all. We will get moments of pure or silence or even just the sounds of nature or combat ringing through our television screens. And we are enthralled. Seeing these stories play out through action and motion rather than words, and us having to follow along with every bit of dialogue that every character says, clinging to it as if it's going to progress the story any further, it is instead shown to us. And that is something I can highly appreciate. Especially for somebody like me who has a problem focusing at times, this show continuously has you pay attention in order to make sure that you don't miss any details. But with that being said, the animation, even now, despite being a cartoon from the early 2000s, still holds up as a masterpiece to this day, with wonderfully drawn backgrounds and animations that are done, with the samurai himself with having rather stiff move movements at times, but even the characters, they move so well. And one of the biggest things that I absolutely adore is the characters themselves, not just Jack and, surprisingly enough, Aku, due to his comedic genius, may Mako rest in peace. But overall, Jack has some very humorous moments at times where he could be facing Aku, for instance, and he'll jump up right into Aku's face and Aku will be so surprised, he'll go, you can fly? And Jack's response, no, jump good. <laughs> and he just ends the episode. Moments like this really help to keep the show spicy, but alive. It's not just all seriousness. There are moments of great comedy as well. And more than that, though, 
I loved watching Jack's journey of how throughout it all, even when there's moments that he has the chance to finally reach his home, that he finally has a chance to go back in time to save his people. people. There are moments where he just gives all that up to try to save those in this scattered future that Aku rules over. He tries to help liberate them or save them in some capacity. Jack really does have that major hero complex. And I mean, can you blame the guy? He was forced to traverse an entire world as a child, learning from various masters and skilled users of various ways to defeat Aku and his minions, only for it all to be wasted when Aku transports him to the future, but now he has a chance to still save these people like he could not save his own. In a way, I feel like that gives him a bit of a martyr complex, or maybe even survivor's guilt, in a way. Especially in Season 5, where we really see this happening. Especially after Jack loses his sword, but then has to gear up in samurai armor, cool guns, motorbike, everything, just to better equip himself for the future. But more than that, we see him struggling with his own, own subconscious at times. We see him trying to concept trying to, let me rephrase that, prevent himself from taking his own life in a form of honorable suicide because he believes that he has failed, especially after spending 50 years in the future, being unable to age, age, possibly still being able to die of natural causes, but even then, he is still stuck in this future with practically no way home. And we see this time and again, his frustrations with it. I think... If you were to ask me some of my favorite episodes of this series entirely, I could name off three at most that really stuck out to me. The last season alone is going to be worth talking about here in a bit, but I just want to cover three episodes of the main series that I thoroughly enjoyed. Those being Jack and the Three Blind Archers, Jack and the Scotsman, and of course, Jack vs. Mad Jack. These three episodes in particular really stuck out to me for various different reasons that I'll, I'll discuss here. First of all, let's talk about Jack and the Three Blind Archers. This one has Jack going against a very difficult opponent for him. These three archers who, while blind, have super excellent hearing that allows them to never miss their shot. And they've come very close to killing him a few times. All because they are guarding a wishing well that could possibly send Jack home. Until he of course, learns differently. But throughout all of this, we see Jack having to adapt to face his enemies on their level. These archers may be blind, but they have incredible skill in hearing. They can pick him out, out from the fluttering of a leaf or a falling snow oh, drift. All of this he has to relearn. He has to reflect on his past, where he was trained by monks who did not rely on their sight as much, but still train all of their senses is what they taught him. So Jack realizes that he has to fight blind to take out these archers. By using his hearing, he is able to do so, and finally gains the upper hand on them, actually tricking these three archers into reflecting their arrows back on each other, thus freeing them from their curse caused by the wishing well. It was actually a really good episode, and more often than not, it was very, very quiet. We see these three archers in the beginning of them taking out an entire robot army, which to me was metal as hell. But then we see Jack having to compensate and learn from his mistakes. And it was fun to actually see Jack act during his training arc a little bit. We see a bit of his past of when he was learning from these various teachers about how he could defeat Aku. It was really interesting to get that glimpse into his past and see him using different skills. Not to mention the episode itself was very nearly silent with the drawing of bowstrings, the rustling of leaves, even a deer munching on grass in a snow-covered forest. And the fact that they made these snow flakes falling onto the ground sound like, sh sound like the shattering of glass was an excellent way to kind of grab the viewer's attention even further. And for now, that even the most smallest of sounds that you might not be able to detect can be absolutely loud to those who are sight-impaired. But then, moving on from that, we go to Jack versus Mad Jack. This episode in particular really stuck out to me at the time, especially since it addresses a lot of issues some of us may go through. We all get frustrated from time to time, and 
sometimes it makes us act in a way that we normally wouldn't do so without all this pent-up frustration inside of us. And this all comes from Jack having a very relatable moment of being absolutely angry that he doesn't have even a moment of peace with various bounty hunters trying to kill him. I mean, I'd be a little frustrated too if I kept getting getting attacked by various assassins just because I have a bounty on my head now. It even culminates with Jack at one point shouting out into the open woods, Who else wants some? And then Aku comes up with a devious plan to have Jack fight himself, or rather his inner demons, which he creates using Mad Jack. All the various anger and hatred and dark emotions within Jack is culminated in a physical representation of that with Mad Jack. And I've got to say, watching Jack fighting as ferociously as he did against his evil counterpart was incredible, but also terrifying in a way. Watching him become consumed by his own rage to the point where they were mirrors of each other. The fact that they were setting a forest ablaze with their swords, even though it might have been a vision of such, the sheer reflection of that, that their rage was burning everything around them to the ground, to the point that they became mere reflections of each other, rage versus rage, that was palpable to behold, and quite frankly, it shows that all of us deal with the struggle of facing our inner demons, of overcoming them. But Jack comes up with a re reasonable way to win. He doesn't overpower his anger. Instead, he chooses to seek peace rather than in putting a permanent end to it. He chooses to let go of his rage and find peace once again. And watching this in a moment of a burning tree, just that single image of a burning tree before us, as we continuously zoom in with this haunting music, getting louder and louder in our ears, only to then see the passing of water through this tree. And then it transitions from a burning tree to a beautiful, peaceful waterfall by a lake. And that Japanese music coming in all together, that lends you a moment of knowing that Jack has won this fight by finding peace, by calming his rage. That was a beautiful moment to see. But now, to move on from something a little bit less heavy and impactful, we have Jack and the Scotsman, which to me remains one of the funniest episodes ever seen in the show. Even if it was just in season one, it's still one of my favorite episodes, and by God, it introduces one of my favorite characters besides Jack, the freaking Scotsman. And to those of you who are fans of the show, please tell me what you think of the Scotsman, but to me... He will always be my absolute favorite character because this dude came up to you with a magic broadsword or with Celtic runes on it on a, and a machine gun for a peg leg and a boatload of attitude ready to wreck robots and not give a damn. <laughs> and I love him to pieces. <laughs> I especially love the moment where he and Jack first meet and all they do is argue about Who's going to back up and get out of whose way when they're standing on a wooden bridge over a massive ravine? <laughs> Only to then find out that they're both being tracked by Yaku. And then they team up together after being literally chained together. But honestly, one of the funniest moments has to be after they've been sunk into the ravine, landing in the water, and seeing each other's ruined personal effects. Jack's hat and the Scotsman's bagpipes, which the Scotsman shot... Jack's hat and half, but then we see the punctured bagpipes. And watching the Scotsman just laughing at Jack's ruined hat, only to see his bagpipes floating by him, and Jack's smug expression never fails to make me laugh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but moving on, though. This series is and will always be my personal favorite, but especially season five. When it was announced on Adult Swim, I tuned in for every episode. And while I do agree it was a bit rushed towards the ending, I loved every second of it. It felt darker, much richer, especially with the inclusions of blood and actual murder. Like, the fact that they had to get past the censors by making every enemy Jack fights a robot was pure genius back in the day. But now, since they were on Adult Swim, they could get away with this kind of stuff. 
And let me tell you, they did not hesitate to make it a much darker atmosphere, with blood and death everywhere. Do I even need to mention the cult of the Daughters of Aku, and how they literally raised an entire... I hear seven seven siblings into elite assassins with the sole purpose of killing Jack in service to Aku. And then we get one of the most conflicting characters ever, Ashi. But me personally, I loved watching her transition as a character from someone who was hell-bent on killing Jack to someone who was, became his greatest ally and love interests. It was actually a really fun character arc for her to watch this, especially the episode where she goes back and encounters various old friends and allies of Jack, from the three archers to the woolies to even, even the rave gang, all of whom show Jack's greatest moments, moments in how he saved each and every one of them and throughout the years. It was really cool to see that. And then watching all these same allies come back and try to save Jack after he's been captured by Aku in the final episode, that was awesome. Especially watching Aku get the crap kicked out of him by a giant stone samurai. Now that was freaking awesome. Especially watching Aku, first of all, get slugged in the face and then having his antlers ripped off his head. That was beautiful karma. Just yes to every moment of that. And I love the fact that people have memed the hell out of that scene alone. Just yes. Pure yes. And what do I think of the fact that Ashi is in fact a true-born daughter of Aku. And the fact that she literally dies within the last episode, right then and there, just fading away, like a force ghost. I honestly don't know how to feel about it. I understand the fact that without Aku, she would have never been born. But at the same time, it feels like such a slap in the face to Jack. He finally has a chance at happiness with a woman he genuinely loves, and right at their wedding day, she dies and disappears. Ugh. I feel like such a slap in the face. I'm not gonna lie. Am I still a little bitter about it? Yes. But overall, I am happy with how the show concluded. And overall, I think Samurai Jack, if you haven't watched it yet, please do yourself a favor and do so. The same with Primal. Which, that alone, I do need to go ahead and watch the second season of because the first season was absolutely excellent and I need to see how the second season goes. But if you are a fan of this series, please let me know your thoughts on it. What were your favorite moments throughout the show? Did you grow up with it? But most of all, let me know what you thought of those little Cartoon Network City bumpers where you see Jack living a daily life in the city. But even, of course, the ever so famous one, him and Johnny Bravo in the laundromat together which spawned the ever-so-famous cultural topic of Samurai Bravo, with the two of them being best friends, which to me is so freaking wholesome, I love it. Okay, getting off topic though, if you like what we do here, folks, please feel free to like this video, subscribe, or just check out more of our content together. Ray and I would really appreciate it if you would give us your thoughts on all of our works that we've done so far, or if you have any suggestions for us, please let us know that as well. We're always open to talking about new topics, especially when it comes to cartoons, anime, movies, whatever suits our fancy. Anyways, thank you all for listening. This is Jonathan of Nerdy Shogun signing off for now, and we will see you all in the next video. Have a great day, fellow nerds.